Hello, and welcome to the Nutrition Diva Podcast. I'm your host, Monica Reinagel, and today we're talking about nutrigenomics, what our genes can tell us about which dietary pattern would be best for us. And later on, I'll also have another kitchen hack from hungry girl, Lisa Lillian. This episode is supported by Sweet Green. Sweet Green is on a mission to redefine fast food with seasonal salads and bowls made from scratch with sustainably sourced ingredients. Their new menu has fresh, delicious options that will make every day feel like summer Friday, like the elote bowl with roasted corn and peppers, or the smoky blueberry summer salad and more. Meet your new favorite summer lunches and order ahead with the Sweet Green app. Learn more at sweetgreen.com. Several of you have written asking me to revisit the subject of nutrigenomics or the attempt to use genetic profiling as a way to steer dietary recommendations. Nutrition Diva listener Brad writes, you did an episode on DNA-based diets in 2012. That was episode number 203. And I know the genetics field has changed very quickly, and I was hopeful that you could revisit this subject. Some of the companies who do this testing also sell specific supplements based on your results, which seems a little suspicious. So what is the state of the art? And then another listener named Diz wrote, I keep seeing these DNA testing companies on social media. They claim to have studies on their website supporting their results. I haven't actually done the test, but I read a sample report and it seemed like the recommendations like eat a high fiber diet were just common sense and would apply to everyone. Can you hang your hat on these tests? Well, as it happens just this week, Researchers reported new findings at the annual meeting of the American Society of Nutrition, which I think you're going to find quite interesting. Since the sequencing of the human genome, there's been a lot of interest in nutrigenomics. It's long been clear that we don't all respond the same way to the same dietary interventions. Some people do really well on a higher fat diet, but others develop high triglycerides or high cholesterol on the same diet. Some people lose more weight when they reduce carbs, but others seem to lose more weight when they increase their complex carbs and reduced fat. So if the differences are genetic, maybe we could skip some of the trial and error and zero in on the best approach for each individual based on their DNA. Now that inexpensive mail-order genetic testing is available, companies have started selling personalized nutrition programs that are supposedly based on your DNA. When I talked about this back in 2012, we didn't yet have any research to show whether these DNA-driven diets were any more effective or valid than standard dietary recommendations, or that DNA-driven supplement regimens might prevent disease. Last year, a team of researchers from King's College in London and Harvard Medical School launched a very ambitious research project called the PREDICT study to figure out what factors determine an individual's unique response to food. This study included 700 identical twins along with 400 non-twins, and they evaluated, among other things, the rise and fall in blood sugar and blood fats after eating various kinds of food. These responses could shed light on which diets would be most effective in preventing diabetes or heart disease for a given individual. If genes are a major player in determining how we respond to different nutrients, then we could expect to see very similar responses in the identical twins. But the preliminary results from this study suggest something quite different. I'll dig into those surprising results after this quick break to thank our sponsors. Today's episode was also supported by Snap Kitchen. Snap Kitchen makes healthy eating easy with fresh, chef crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. Meals are ready in about five minutes and they start at just $5.99 per meal. It's healthy eating made easy, so you can just do you. Snap's chefs and dietitians create meals with well sourced, high quality ingredients. You never have to cook anything, just heat and enjoy. And all of their meals are free of gluten, hormones, antibiotics, artificial preservatives, colors, and flavors. And they offer plans for all types of dietary needs, including vegetarian, vegan, high-protein, and low-carb lifestyles. Having these vegetable-packed entrees in the fridge has totally upped my lunch game. Instead of being tempted to run out for a bite to eat, which can get really expensive, I just pop a delicious meal from Snap into the microwave. 
You can get started at snapkitchen.com and use the promo code DIVA to save $20 a week on your first four weeks. That's snapkitchen.com and the promo code DIVA for $80 off. We also received support this week from Undeniably Dairy. One in six kids in the U.S. faces hunger, and that number goes up during the summer months when children lose access to school meal programs. Undeniably Dairy and America's Dairy Farmers have been passionate about providing food to families for a long time, and this summer, they're building on dairy's commitment to nourishing communities by partnering with Feeding America to fight child hunger. Dairy is a simple, affordable source of many essential nutrients. And did you know that 95% of dairy farms are family-owned, and most milk is made less than a two-hour drive from where it's sold? So when you buy cheese, yogurt, or milk, you're supporting hardworking dairy farm families near you. Help get food to families who need it. Go to giveagallon.com to donate to a food bank in your community. That's giveagallon.com to donate to a food bank in your community. Preliminary results from the PREDICT study confirm what we've already been able to observe. Different people respond very differently to the same dietary inputs. There is no one dietary approach that's going to work best for everyone. Now, if these differences are genetically driven, then we would expect identical twins to respond similarly, but in this study, they did not. Genetics appeared to account for less than a third of the subject's insulin and triglyceride responses. And the specific ratio of fats and carbohydrates in the meal were also not strongly predictive. Other factors, such as sleep habits, exercise, stress, and gut microbes, appeared to play a much bigger role in our individual responses to diet. Now, this is kind of bad news for companies who are selling DNA-based diets, but it's good news for you and me. We can't change our genes, but we can change how much we sleep, how we manage stress, how much we exercise. We can even influence our gut microbes. In my recent episode on leaky gut, dietitian Tamara Freuman had the following advice. The best thing you could do is to eat the most diverse, plant-heavy diet that comfortably you can tolerate. That means beans and root vegetables and leafy greens and nuts and seeds and fruits. The more diverse the plant-based foods in your diet, the more diverse your gut microbiota will be. On the one hand, the principal components of a healthy diet and lifestyle are pretty universal. Everyone is going to benefit from eating more whole foods, avoiding excessive sugar, alcohol, and processed foods, getting enough sleep, and moving their bodies. On the other hand, the more I can help you tailor your diet and your habits to fit your individual needs, preferences, and lifestyle, the better and more sustainable your results will be. So I'm not arguing against personalized nutrition. I'm just saying that at present, it doesn't look like DNA testing is the most useful approach. Although it's pretty low tech, our best tool is still to observe how your body responds to a given approach and adjust based on your results. For example, I have a good friend who has a genetic predisposition to diabetes. Now, DNA testing would probably advise him to follow a low-carb diet, which he did for many years. And during that time, his blood sugar rose steadily until his doctor threatened to put him on blood sugar-lowering medications. Instead, he decided to try something different. For him, it turned out that a plant-based diet, which is much higher in carbohydrates, was actually much more effective in controlling both his weight and his blood sugar. Now, your doctor can monitor things like your cholesterol and your blood sugar levels, but between visits, you have access to a lot of other information. Is your weight trending up, down, or staying steady? How are your hunger levels, your energy, your stamina? If you're not happy with the status quo, make some changes and observe what happens. Now, next up, I have a kitchen hack from Hungry Girl, who is always looking for ways to make food more filling and satisfying. But before I turn it over to Lisa, I wanted to mention a live workshop that I'm doing this week with Get Fit Guy Brock Armstrong. As you may know, Brock and I created a program to help people find the diet and the lifestyle that helps them weigh less without dieting. And in line with today's topic, we do spend a lot of time figuring out the dietary approach and the exercise style that feels good to you and leads to the results that you're looking for. 
In this workshop, we'll be sharing the method that we use in the Wayless program and the science behind it. You can sign up to attend by going to wayless.life slash workshop, and I hope to see you there. And now here's Lisa Lillian with a tip on making your morning oats more satisfying. I find this tip works best if you use old-fashioned oats. Hey, Nutrition Diva listeners, I have a great oatmeal trick for you. You know how oatmeal serving sizes are kind of depressingly small? Well, here's a way to double your serving size. When you're cooking your oats, just take a regular serving of oatmeal, which is about a half a cup, and then cook it with twice as much liquid. So you're going to use two cups of liquid instead of one. And I like to use like a nice low calorie almond milk for, you know, one of those cups and then a cup of water for the other. Then you want to cook it twice as long as the directions on the box say, and then let it sit and grow. You take it off of the heat and you let it just sit for a while and your oatmeal just grows and grows. And your serving size is about twice as large as it would be for the same amount of calories. It's really amazing. Now, if you like that trick, there are so many other great tricks and recipes in the Simply Oats section of my new cookbook, Hungry Girl Simply Six. So check it out. Thanks so much for that, Lisa. And check out Lisa's podcast, Chew the Right Thing. You'll find a transcript of today's show at quickanddirtytips.com, and I've included a link to the PREDICT study if you'd like to learn more about it, or you can even volunteer to be a subject. And I've also got links to some previous episodes that I've done on DNA-driven diets. Our show is produced by Nathan Sems, edited by Karen Hertzberg, with additional support from Emily Miller, Mikaela Prell, Morgan Ratner, and Michelle Margulis. You can learn more about the Wayless program at wayless.life or look me up on Facebook or Twitter. I'd love to hear from you. Have a great week.